I normally never start my videos like this, but I have finished my quilt. The project is done and it has been sublime. It has been beautiful. And I wanna tell you that quilting is not as hard or as intimidating as you think it is. And if I can do it, you can do it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you just how beautiful and therapeutic quilting can be. So I've tried to give you as much detail as possible about the journey, about the adventure. So if you want to quilt and make your own quilt, you can do so. So without too much detail, let me just take you from the beginning to the end. Here we go. I nervously kicked off this project by cutting pink square pieces for my quilt. I started this project a year ago when I was pregnant and at the time I didn't know we were having a go but now we know I wanted some pink. With all of my pieces in hand I proceeded to arrange them all in a way that was pleasing to my eyes. Determining the pattern and the order I wanted all the fabric to go in was a bit of a process but I didn't stop till I found a look that made me happy. It's worth noting that I didn't follow a pattern or a tutorial for this look, I just followed my own heartbeat and the whispers of my ancestors. I then woke up my sewing machine from her slumber, I picked up the first row piece by piece making sure that I preserved the order and began the sewing magic. One piece became two, and two became three, and three slowly became a row. Once I lined up the first row on the floor, I noticed that sewing the squares together meant I was losing quite a bit of fabric, so I added up a few more squares to each row for good measure. I also added another row vertically just to be on the safe side. With all of that work out of the way, it was time to warm up my sewing chair and do some serious, serious sewing. Row after row, the quilt was beginning to come together and the more I sewed, the more content I was with what was taking shape in front of my own eyes. And you can tell it's the end of the day because my makeup is looking not good. <laughs> but we're on the last row! Oh, I am on cloud nine! This could be my thing, maybe I could make more quilts. Look at that, boom, the fabric is together. As simple as that. This is what I got into sewing for, for the repetitive work and so far it's just been a lot of stressful work. So this is it man, <laughs> I'm not sewing anything else besides quilts. Uh, I'm joking, I still want to make dresses. <laughs> Done! There you go, last row. And I got really excited like five minutes ago thinking, oh wow, this went really, really quickly. But then I forgot I have to attach the rows together. <laughs> also, I feel like I haven't mentioned, but I'm planning to hand quilt this, which I'm so excited for. I want it to have like a homemade look and I think the hand quilted look is just so beautiful and so cozy and it is the vibe I'm going for. So. I'm excited. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rows together and based on the extensive research that I've done on this, I found a method. So let me show you how I'm gonna do it. So the goal with pressing is to make sure that the pieces lay as flat as possible when the rows come together. So I pressed one row to one side and then the following row to the other side. When it came to joining them together, I let the stitch lines lead me, gently following their placements and pinning them in place. I was crossing my fingers hoping that the results would be neat. Pinning all the rows together is a labor of love and an investment of time as you can see here. But strangely enough, I loved every bit of it. Also, as I was pinning, I realized that I was wearing the same dress I wore when I was pregnant and I was preparing the fabric for this project and I got so emotional because really time goes by so fast. Look at this! It is all pinned! 
it's looking great i'm excited and now we just gotta get on with sewing all of these rows and it looks a bit short to me so i'm gonna sew it and i might need to add a few more rows but we'll see i'm, I'm just gonna sew it first i feel quite intimidated not gonna lie i'm like okay i've done this it's gone surprisingly well i feel like this is where things are gonna go downhill i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna this project is all about going for it that's what i'm thinking i'm just gonna go for it see what happens when it came to sewing the first row i took my time and i chose to keep the pins in place to ensure that the rows would not move too much so the first row has been done and i'm just gonna check that it looks okay before getting on with sewing everything because if i need to correct course i should do it now before i sew the whole quilt i'm just taking the pins out i have to say i'm nervous i'm like is it gonna look good i hope it's gonna look good okay the pins are out it is time to look at our piece of work oh 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 okay all right look at this look at these lines matching up so beautifully not everything is matching up beautifully like this for example it's not matching up 100% but most of them are and I'm happy with that that's all I could ask for um, okay let's just sew and hopefully this will continue to go as well as it has so far row after row the quilt was coming together and i'm pretty sure i spent the whole evening just sewing rows but man when i was done i was so happy i even did a little dance i then added another row to the bottom of the quilt as i felt it was still too short for my liking it is done it is finished three things about this process first everything's been enjoyable two it's been quite straightforward not much drama three i have learned something when quilting choose the same weight fabric because that'll make a difference so at last minute i decided to insert this laurel lee viscose and it is so different than the cotton and you can really tell it really stands out not in the worst way possible but it does i'm still going to keep it because it looks really cute but I have learned a lesson and I'm telling you so you can avoid my mistake and you can do an even better job than me but yeah the method worked um, everything worked <laughs> can't believe it also I like to tell the world that I bought a really expensive shampoo in the hope of making my hair look prettier and my hair is not loving it it looks rubbish it is so flat I'm pretty sure my hair would have looked better with like nettle shampoo <laughs> we used to wash our hair with nettle shampoo when we were kids it was great <laughs> anyways so much for buying good quality shampoo <laughs> and now you know why my hair is rubbish in this video so anyways i pressed the fabric on both sides to make sure every row was lying as flat and as beautiful as possible i then placed the front of the quilt on the floor and chopped off all of the tiny threads that i could see i then picked this gingham sandy fabric for the back of my quilt and cut it to fit the front of the quilt i did the same thing with the wool batting and just like that i had three beautiful layers to work with i took some of these lovely little clips and clipped the whole thing together to ensure everything would stay in place i then took this gorgeous thread and manually wound it up to avoid any tangly mess from happening I genuinely can't believe that I'm at this stage. It is happening. Oh, we're in. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, take the quilt and then just kind of sew it in the middle for each square. And I'm thinking, that would be nice simple yet beautiful i measured the thread to match the width of my row made a knot and began hand stitching this was by far the part i was most looking forward to and it did not disappoint i took it easy letting the needle kiss the fabric in equal parts to ensure that the marks it left were soft and neat Okay, 
so I am on my last row. This is the only one I have to do. And I have done 12 rows of hand stitching. And I have learned some lessons, which I feel like I need to share, just in case people are curious. The first lesson is the first row is gonna get butchered. <laughs> this row got really, really butchered because I kept picking it and sewing again because I just needed to get to some stitches that were making me happy and I wasn't doing it. So I think I must have spent like two hours on the first row practicing and practicing and getting uh, a feel for things but then with each row things got so much easier things got so much more enjoyable and just so much more neat so definitely practice makes improvement also what I've noticed that each row takes about 15 minutes to kind of hand stitch so it is a labor of love, a labor of time. Also, I have noticed that when I try to like pack a lot of fabric onto the needle, my stitches are like wonky. Whereas when I take it easy and I just pack one or two or three, it just is so much more neat. So taking it easy will create some amazing results. I have noticed that my back hurts from like doing this. <laughs> Uh, so definitely get a massage after your quilting. I've noticed that it is highly enjoyable and highly rewarding and it feels so soft and it's amazing to just trace your work. I have noticed that it is great for pondering. You're just there doing repetitive work so your mind is relaxed and you're just able to think and plan and just meditate. <laughs> I have to say I think this is my most favorite project and I've ever 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 worked on. Um, which is cute because it is my daughter's birthday quilt so that's special oh yes I've noticed that my thumb and finger are really really sore from trying to kind of push the needle so I'm definitely gonna invest into a leather thimble for my next quilts because there will be next quilts I love the hand stitching I think it gives it such a cozy feel such a like handmade feel which I am here for it like I am here for the handmade vibes like I want Arwen to know that mommy made this for her by hand um yeah and I'm gonna go and do the last uh, row and I'm gonna um stitch this row with a prayer for my daughter <laughs> getting emotional but I feel like that would be such a lovely thing to do just like stitch and pray for her for her future for her life for protection and for joy and for just just a lot of good things but yeah okay right so I'm gonna do the last stitch and then we're moving on to the bias binding which I watched a video tutorial about so I'm not feeling intimidated but I'm also a little scared <laughs> So we'll, we shall see how that goes. For the bias binding, I cut two long strips at two and a half inches wide. I needed to join the strips and I've learned that the key is to leave some space at the corners as that will give you a really beautiful marriage of the strips. I snipped the ends off and then took the whole thing to the ironing table to press it open. I then folded the bias binding in half and pressed the whole thing. I attached the bias binding to the back of the quilt, row edges together and then took the quilt to the sewing machine and nervously started this intimidating part of the process. quarters of the quilt was what I was most nervous of, but the trick was to pivot the needle as I approached the corner and sew straight into it. Then I had to fold the fabric on top of the corner, making a straight line of the bias binding and then stitching across. For this part, I relied heavily on tutorials and here I was finishing up the bias binding and wanted to do so neatly which required yet another tutorial. I took the width of the bias binding and used it as a measuring tool to see how much the strips had to overlap each other. 
Then I did a snip, made sure I was happy, and then with the right size together, I did a pin test to make sure I wasn't making any mistakes. Once I was happy with it, I took it to the sewing machine, gently stitched it, then snipped the excess fabric and voila, the bias binding was closed, all I had to do was finish stitching it to the quilt. As soon as I was done with the back of the quilt, I flipped it to the front, folded the bias binding over the raw edges and clipped it to keep everything in place. I then took it to the sewing machine, making sure that I paid attention to the corners as this was something I hadn't done before, but thanks to the tutorials on YouTube, I was able to handle them corners like a boss, praise the Lord. I'm about to put the finishing like three stitches to the quilt and then I'm done. And I feel so emotional, like, oh my gosh, I actually did it. I actually climbed Everest. Making a quilt from scratch has been like this mountain experience and you know when you approach a mountain and it looks so tall and it looks like oh my god how am I gonna get to the top that's how a quilt has been for me this intimidating experience that I've kind of wanted but I've always been intimidating by oh. and I am at the top I have done it I'm about to do it, I'm about to finish it. And I'm like, wow! The world is my oyster! <laughs> yeah, I feel like this has been the most incredible project, the most fun project, the most developmentally stretching project. I've learned so much and I just want to make quilts from now on. But like nice quilts now, I mean... Yeah, so I'm about to put the stitches on and then I'll show you the, the quilt. <laughs> I might go and hang it out like in the forest or something, you know, do its justice. But ugh. if there's anything I'd like to say is that if I can make a quilt, you can make a quilt. Like I am generally honest here. I never thought I was going to be able to make a quilt. But I have made it and I have hand stitched it and I am, I've bias binded it and I've done it and it's not perfect at all. And there's so many like little mistakes that I've made along the ways and so many learning curves. But if I can do a quilt, you can do a quilt. Like honestly, if I can sew, you can sew. If me, clumsy, Alexandra um, can sew, who's very bad at maths, um, you can sew, you can sew my friend. All you have to do is just put your head down, focus, and just fill your heart, lots of YouTube tutorials, and um, yeah, you can do it. I can't believe I've done it. I can't believe I'm about to put the last stitches Oh my quilt. Ah, is it weird that I kind of want to cry? <laughs> these are these are good happy happy tears. <clears throat> these are really good happy tears. I'm so so proud of myself. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to be proud of yourself from time to time. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. This is it. These are my last little bits. Here we go. Done. This is it. My quilt is finished! Okay, let me show you. 